Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is another edition of Unger the Radar. And with me today is fellow film critic, magician, and mentalist. Can't say that uh, too often. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that enough, yeah. Right, right. right. How, how's it going, Rob? Robin Channing. <laughs> yes, and Randy Unger. Hey. So, hey, hi. Mutual introductions have done have been accomplished. Indeed, they uh, have. All right. Now, we usually have a, a, a bigger uh, panel. But yeah, yeah, a little... A little a larger <laughs> cast to fill out the couch, kind yeah, of. Yeah, but with, with your personality, it'll be big enough, so. Yes, yes. <laughs> My big head alone should cover the couch, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, I have a big head, and, and That's okay. I'm I have a big head, too. Sorry. That's fine. Finding hats is difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, so, yeah. We've got a... Three movies today, yeah? Three interesting movies, all very different. Mm -hmm. One of which I know you're a personal fan of. Oh, yes. Ever since I found it, I was like, oh, we... <laughs> Randy has to watch this, and we might as well review it while we're at it. You know, let's save it for the end. Let's do that, yes. Um, we'll, we'll get the painful stuff out of the way first. Yes. <laughs> let's start with the most painful one. That would be um, this independent drama thriller called Discreet. Y yeah. About a young man um, who was, I believe he was molested as a kid. So he goes back, he finds the guy, lives with him uh, for a little while, like takes care of him because he's kind of an invalid. And, yeah, it's just a strange movie all around. <laughs> yeah, and even for me, I found it difficult to follow. And I'm one of those yeah. I'm one of those weirdos that actually f understood almost completely, well, very completely, The Matrix to, from the first viewing. <laughs> Any subsequent viewing was just to pick up the tiny details. Yeah. And even then, with that level of comprehension, I find it difficult to follow discreet. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, why? I wish we could review The Matrix trilogy that'd be cool <laughs> oh oh yeah right yeah like retro film yeah yeah, yeah. well that we can maybe good. dive into that in a, in a minute but um. oh <laughs> dive into the matrix good one. Oh, thank you, thank you. yeah <laughs> all right but um this is an independent film i guess you'd call it an art film uh, like a surreal kind of piece yeah yeah, yeah. exactly like yeah a, yeah i mean it sort of reminds me of if i if i should give them the compliment mm -hmm. of comparison <laughs> Yeah. The works of David Lynch. I thought of Eraserhead for sure. I, I thought of Lost Highway for sure. Uh, oh yeah, and, that, and that movie was kind of a jigsaw puzzle in its own right, uh, Lost yeah. Highway. So yeah, that's what, <laughs> if anything, the filmmaker for Discreet probably had David Lynch as yeah. an influence. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of surreal, sort of dreamlike right. uh, aspect of it. And it. This movie felt a lot more like a dream than it did like a story. Yeah, per se. like I still don't get it. There were moments of an Asian woman appearing, like humming. Mm. Um, for yeah, no yeah, reason. saying like this is like this is so, so um like medit like hypnosis almost like a meditative type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that I, <laughs> I, 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 so at first I thought that yeah it was gonna be sort of like a, a sort of a spiritual journey, like a brain empowerment kind of thing, okay. like share your experiences with us and and the, the the main character in question shared some really horrific experiences. Yeah, and I'm like okay, it's for the sense let's take a sensory experience. Mm -hmm. and I'm like. Mm -hmm. That is one rabbit hole I really didn't need to follow. Yeah, <laughs> and it's even more disturbing. Like in the first few minutes, you see him in like a, a porn, like a, a video rental place uh -huh. in the back with another guy. I'm not gonna get into details. No, I, I, those, <laughs> there are details I wish I could unsee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a very well, bizarre movie. All, you know. Yeah, right. Um, um, I'm, I'm gonna refer <laughs> to that wish for being blind later on. Oh God! Okay, all right. <laughs> It's right, pretty just, bad. But yeah, I, yeah, it, it, it gets really... I'm like, wait, I, I, let's just put it this way. There were certain scenes from Watchmen watching on the big screen that I preferred to see. But, you know, <laughs> the so big like, blue... Uh, yeah, never yes, mind, never right, mind. right, yeah. The, <laughs> the, the, the Dr. Manhattan. Yes, <laughs> that was played by uh, Billy Crudup, actually. Yep. I don't know if that was his, re his real body, though. Yeah, especially that one part in question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but moving on. <laughs> moving on. It was digital anyway. So yeah, that's true. Okay. But um, Johnny Mars is the actor who played the main uh, character. I thought he was good, mm -hmm. but the movie that was around him was not. So mm. I mean, I, I'd like to see him in other stuff. I I, I might check out his work, but um, okay. Yeah. It's just so, oh God, it's depressing, it's weird, it's dark. Visceral. Yeah. yeah. I, I go for dark. Yeah. I mean, I like I mentioned Lost Highway before, and and uh, mm. another dark movie I really got into was The Machinist. Yeah. I was able to go through that. I was like, wow, mind trip, that was like trippy. That was Bale, right? He, he lost Chris, all that weight. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, yeah it was like nightmarish what he did to his body for that, and also the journey yeah. in that one. But and then a few years later, he, he wrote, you know, gained it all back for Batman. Yeah, right. It's crazy. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's just like, that's that's horrific. It's like, really not healthy. <laughs> I know, right? I hope he doesn't go through that extreme again. Yeah. He but, seems to have been the same for the past couple of years. Though, like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's steadied out. I'm like, because yeah. if anything, I'm just hoping Hollywood uh, reconsiders 
putting Bale through that nonsense because it's like, mm. hey, dude, you know, we, 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 we like Christian Bale. Yeah. We want to make sure Christian Bale is in it for the long run. Let's right. make sure Christian Bale is healthy. <laughs> right. you know? I hear that. Okay. So wait, Travis Matthews, he, was, he wrote, he directed this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming he's an indie um, artist. It director. feels indie. Like this is yeah. one of his first movies. You right, know? right, right. And I actually do respect the choices he made in terms of visual style mm-hmm. and the whole surrealness of it all, the dreamlike quality of it. Mm-hmm. But um, overall, it, it kind of felt kind of flat. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, I brought up movies like Lost Highway yeah. and, and you know David Lynch. Anything by David. Lynch. Anything by David yeah. Lynch. You know, and <laughs> and even though that's a compliment to this guy's favor, mm-hmm. it's it, it having seen the works of David Lynch, it just feels the bar for if this type of film for me is set too high. Well, maybe his best works are yet to come. So, we'll yeah, see. yeah, because oh. you gotta start somewhere. And <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, and then you build up from there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. So, final thoughts on Discreet. <laughs> Oh, watch at your own discretion. And I cannot, re- I <laughs> nice. cannot recommend the word discretion <laughs> for a movie called Discreet. <laughs> you know, enough. Right, right, right. That's awesome. So there you have it. There it is. It should be called discretion. Instead. Yeah, right. It should be. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on to movie number two, uh, Beach House. Mm-hmm. This was an interesting one. A lot better, in my opinion, than Dis- Discreet. Um, basically, it's about a, a young girl with her family in a beach house. Um, over the summer months, or is it a weekend or summer? More like summer. Summer, because, right? Yeah, yeah. It takes place like several. And days. they're they're kind of like kind of well to do, um, and the mother has an old friend who randomly shows up and hangs out with them. Yeah. And the the, the daughter uh, develops an attraction to him, a sexual attraction, right, and mental. Um, I liked it. I thought it was well acted. I thought she was great. Uh, Willa mm-hmm. Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. Um, she did a good job. Yeah, yes. yeah. It was pretty decent, actually. Well-to-do family. I mean, the daughter only talked about just hanging out in Germany just to find inspiration for right. her writing. I'm like, okay, that is not... They're not even talking about saving up or anything. She's just like, oh, I'm just going to go to Germany. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's implied that... It's so random, go. Germany, for writing. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I get it. Okay. It's like, <laughs> anywhere but home. Uh, yeah, anywhere <laughs> but home, right? So, um... The, I don't want to give away any details because there's a reveal at the end which I thought was surprising for a movie of its type mm-hmm. because if you see this movie you expect it to go a certain direction but then you're like wait it didn't mm-hmm. I'm like whoa yeah. that is nice yeah, yeah. if nothing else the surprise factor I thought was an interesting choice Okay. and uh, how the movie ends was what really brought it home for me yeah. that, that, that plot twist at the end and the and the ending very dark yeah, yeah it, it's dark it's a different kind of dark mm. and, it, and it's just uh, and, and I, I like what the girl's journey going through this was especially when she reaches the end and so forth and like what 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 happened what she did the, the aftermath mm-hmm. what she has to live with at the end and it didn't really show anything they, they just showed the aftermath which was great yeah it's <laughs> a, so therefore it's a it really is riveting psychologically yeah I thought the filmmaker did a really good job of just driving the psychological aspects of it. You know, nothing was gory, although it was really implied to be, especially mm-hmm. from the strangers photography. It's more emotionally but, damaging, I think. Than emotionally <laughs> and psychologically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> this was a very psychological movie. Right. And, and for that, I appreciated it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm glad that of the of these movies that this was the one that for that once we once we decided what movie we were going to watch, I was glad this was the first one that I watched. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, all right. So, so yeah, very good psychological drama of a right. dark type, and that's drama like thriller, drama thriller yeah. suspense. Yeah. yeah, it actually reminded me. Um, I don't know if you know about this movie from 1992 called uh, The Crush or Crush. Katie Holmes. Is it Katie Holmes? No, it's um Alicia Silverstone. Oh, Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. Um, Carrie Elwes. Okay. Kind of the older man seducing the teen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think she seduced him. Uh, did she? I think so. Well, I, maybe this is the reverse of that. Yeah. Okay. You know? Okay. It's, it, it, Thank it's, you, Jim. It's, a, it's a familiar theme, sort of like the whole Lolita thing. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, there was a film version of Lolita with uh, Jeremy Irons, which mm-hmm. I thought was. Was excellent. that the remake of the? Yeah, the remake. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Jeremy Irons version I thought was excellent. Nice. Jeremy Irons, you can't well, anything. Go wrong with that he's, man. In. he's great. You know. <laughs> so you know, you got the whole Lolita, and that's what it felt like. That's another thing about uh, Beach House that. Um, they, even though the girl was of college age, she's legal. There was still kind of a Lolita vibe to it. Mm, definitely. Yeah, you know, because the guy was a very you know he was a very mature man. Yeah. 
and she was just of age. Yeah, I think she was what twenty one in this. Yeah, yeah. Just... So 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 she wasn't like you know illegally young. Mm-hmm. She was just legal enough, but even then she was young. So there yeah. there was to for, so to me there was a bit of a Lolita parallel. Okay, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And so there was that there was that extra bit of tension leading into it as mm-hmm. well. So you don't know if it's going to be like a Lolita story. You don't know if it's going to be like a, a murder story. You don't mm-hmm. know which way. And by the time you realize which which direction it was really headed, you're like, wow, well played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I liked it a lot. Yeah. I was surprised. I thought it'd be a lot, you know, less uh, interesting than it was. Yeah. But um, it surprised me. I was surprised uh, by that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it could have gone a very one could say cliche direction. Yeah. I'm glad it didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. based on how the movie was building and, and so forth. So it, the, the 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 filmmaker did a really good job building the story, mm-hmm. for, you know, giving the layers, and and you know the, the build up the, the, the clues here and there and yeah. all that build up it was just <laughs> artfully done it was yeah it was decent <clears throat> mm-hmm. I recommend it highly actually yes. on the radar for sure mm-hmm. alright moving on mm-hmm. to your favorite movie of all time I no well, <laughs> I, uh, well, believe me I've got like a in terms of favorite movie of all time I've got like a favorite playlist of mm-hmm. if nice. you will. okay well, and this is made it to mine. It's on my nice. radar. Cook up a storm. Now, cook up a storm. <coughs> so it's a drama about two chefs, rival chefs. One's a street food chef. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one, the other one is a Michelin star chef. Mm-hmm. And they basically go head to head in like an Iron Chef kind of co- competition yeah. to battle the what was it, god of cookery. Yes, <laughs> like the, the chef god, if you will. Yes, right. he's like the grand champion of chefs. If Who you will. actually? I don't, this isn't a spoiler. Really. Who is one of their fathers? Yeah, <laughs> right. so, coincidentally enough. <laughs> right, right, right. And and it's it, it's 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 not so much the the chefs. It's also what they represent because the street guy, the street chef, he represents traditional Chinese cuisine, which uh, which goes back mm-hmm. centuries, maybe millennia. Yeah, you know, the, the recipes. He's he's staying true to the Chinese tradition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Sky Ko. Whereas the other guy, Paul An, three star Michelin chef. He's been trained in France, so he knows yeah. French cuisine. He knows molecular gastronomy. Yeah, he serves the royal, you know, royalty. Yeah, he, he <laughs> serves like the upper crust, the yeah, elite. Yeah. And and I mean, for anybody who knows cooking, the fact that he goes through methods like sous vide and uh, spherification, and you know, you see his methods. Yes, I like to cook. So yeah, I was about to ask. <laughs> I, so I know some of the terminology. That's great. So so the fact that he goes through these methods that 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 that's in his arsenal. You're like, this guy is high end. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. And but his philosophy is about innovation, mm-hmm. whereas the the other guy, Skyco, his his philosophy is about. The tradition. Mm-hmm. So it's tradition versus innovation. That's right. what that's the two schools of thought. And also old his, school, new school. And, yeah. and furthermore, the, the street chef Sky Cole, he is such that he represents the everyman mm-hmm. food that everybody can enjoy. Whereas the other guy, he, he represents like what the elite should enjoy. Yeah, you know, this is the highest level of cuisine. <laughs> Yours is like plebeian, you know, whatever. Yeah. But the way they interact, yeah, the, the way they bond, yeah, was, yeah. was really. Yeah, because they weren't so much enemies per se, even no. though they came from like rival, like uh, uh, competing restaurants. I like that it was a rivalry, mm-hmm. you know, a rivalry that really developed very nicely over yeah. the course of the movie. Uh, I could go on and on. But, I know. Please, well, yeah. well, we've got some time for that. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. We got some time. Yeah, right, but, right. Um, no, like, yeah, I like the, the old school versus the new school. Uh huh. You know, two different schools of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't enemies. You're right. They were rivals. They were colleagues if you will yeah right and they're both competing for the same thing and they both want to basically just create quality food for people who enjoy that right and i respected that Mm -hmm. um the whole god of cookery thing the father the relationship between him and it was sky co yeah 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 that was a little too cliche in a way well i Um, like that actually you did because it gives uh like more of a personal character arc to sky because i don't think we needed that much more though no, no, I, I think it was necessary because the way it ended mm-hmm. was just the, the, that ending was just such, it hit such a good sentimental note. Yeah. Without giving point. anything away. Right, right, right. But what he did at the end was, that was just right. <laughs> Nothing else needed to be done. That, that's, that, that, that <laughs> last moment, that moment of bliss. Mm-hmm. That yeah, no, was, that, was, that, was, that was sweet. And that was made possible only because of that history. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah, they had like a really difficult history at first, but yeah. then at the end, wow, 
That was <laughs> spot on. Well done. Well played. How the, now this movie came out I think last year. Like maybe a couple years ago. I yeah, think it was it, like for Chinese New Year or something yeah, like yeah. that. Well, basically, oh, and I don't think I told it's it's in Cantonese. Yeah. Um, right. But how did you find out about this movie? I just found it. I just saw <laughs> clips of it. Like, okay, a little background inform me. Uh, one of my favorite manga and now anime titles of all time is a title called Shokugeki no Soma. Mm. The English imported title is the same, except they put Food Wars at the beginning of it. All right. But I'm one of the tr the guys who adhere to the, tr the the Japanese name, so instead of saying Food Wars Shokugeki no Soma, I insist on calling it Shokugeki no Soma. Okay. So, I'm just going to say Food Wars. Okay. No, <laughs> you can call it Food Wars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I've seen the English dub of the anime and, uh, as well, and they, they emphasize that the, 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 the food battles aren't called Shokugeki in the English dub. They're called Food Wars. So it's, it's like an animated version of this movie? Uh, no, no. Anime, well, I'll, I'm going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> and when I first saw the clips of Cook Up a Storm, I thought it was very similar to Shokugeki no Soma. Mm. It, there were people who I saw online on Facebook d paralleling it to like a live-action version of Shokugeki no Soma. And mm. I decided to do some research and then I found out, oh, it's this Cantonese movie called Cook Up a Storm. Mm -hmm. I found it, I saw it, and I'm like, I love this movie. <laughs> cool. Know? And I'm like, I should share it with other people, you know, and I, and, this and is, here we are. <laughs> and here we are, and, and, and this is the first movie I got to share with you. Yes, yes. My first, my first contribution cinematically to Unger the Raider, oh. as it were, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there, it have, there we have it. And we appreciate it. Uh-huh. <laughs> So yeah, so you know the character arcs, the, the you know the cook and you know the skills that they put, and also the the way that they showed the cooking was yeah. just exquisite. The slow motion shots, the and, and I think so you could call that food porn, right? That's a thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's, that's a, a thing, thing now. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a term now, especially right. in Shoka Gang. You know, some food porn. You know? Right, right. Yeah, the slow motion of the knife. You know, it's like really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and also the way the the salmon got diced right off oh the my skin God. and so forth. Yeah. That was just oh. and it's slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And he just flips the skin as if yeah. it were a train. It's just like all yeah, that diced yeah. salmon meat. There it is. Oh, good. So, were they real cooks? These actors? No, yeah, I never investigated it because to me, I'm like, damn it, these guys did such <laughs> a good, good job. They, they were they, good. That's all that matters. Or at least they look good. I mean, yeah. maybe they're actors who have really studied the art of of cooking. Or, I, don't know. I mean, I've seen movies like um, Stuart Townsend. Stuart Townsend. He played uh -huh. Lestat in Queen of the Damned, which. Mm. Uh, was not really it didn't really do Anne Rice justice that movie uh -huh. but I bring up Stuart Townsend because he was in a movie called Shade with uh, Sylvester Stallone Shade and other, yeah and Stuart Townsend this film this was movie this movie was made by some professional magicians uh -huh. and and Stuart Townsend was trained by a professional magician to uh, in expert level card technique all right so when you see Stuart Townsend doing some 4A stuff or some other really advanced level card technique, mm. this, the, pan, the, the same shot pans up from the hands to see all of Stuart Townsend. And all right. So you see that that's really him doing it. Huh. So he, you see that that's the real actor doing the real thing. I mean, The Matrix kind of set a standard for it back in the late 90s because it showed that you don't have to be you know, a highly trained martial artist from ch early childhood. Right. To be able to do martial arts in the movies, they yeah. can just take Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, and and Hugo Weaving, and so on. So they probably train, train for a couple weeks, I think. A few months. Months, yeah. Yeah, they train. You can take guys, train them for months, and then have them do martial arts scenes that kick a. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other cue cue cards. Cue Keanu Reeves. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, that, that's why I brought up Stuart Townsend in right. that independent movie Shade for right. that reason, and even Arnold. Schwar I mean, not so. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, my my this guy. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone even learned some card moves. Really? Yeah, yeah he, he did like, a, I think, a three ace, four ace type of thing. And now for my next trick. I, I know, right? <laughs> but no, they weren't card magicians. They were card gamblers, you know, card players. Ah, okay. So, you know, <laughs> and shade is a technical term in, in the movie. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you could check that out yourself, actually. Yeah. It came out several years ago. But shade. I bring out these parallels between The Matrix and Shade for the fact that actors could be trained in that field just to make their characters look that much more authentic. Right. Having said that, bringing it back to Cook Up a Storm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if the actors who play, you know, the, the two main chefs uh, were, you know, I, I believe they are actors, mm -hmm. but they trained enough in, in the culinary arts to do what they did convincingly. Yeah, and I think they pulled it off great. Yeah, you know, really well. And uh, and also, any of you food fans, any of you cooking fans, uh, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional chef, watch this movie because it, oh my god, this movie gets in some really cool territory. Yeah. And, uh, and also the way they built it up. Uh, cause, um, I'm gonna a little bit of a spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. The two chefs actually do collaborate 
at mm-hmm. towards the end of the movie. Yeah. And there, there was a dish called mapo tofu that was mentioned early in the movie. Hmm. Uh, Paul on the, the 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 Michelin chef mm-hmm. mentioned uh, that mapo tofu is a dish that's been around for like some three hundred years, and the recipe has been unchanged during that time. Nice. And that's what he came to from France back to China to do to go to his roots. Mm-hmm to to innovate the, the bring innovation to the traditions mm-hmm. and when they collaborated together the two chefs you know the traditionalists and the uh, the innovator they came up with a molecularized version of mapo tofu mm-hmm. that is just exquisite and i cannot go on enough about that dish yeah. in, in chinese cuisine in oh, Sichuan cuisine such in, it, it, it's like a staple dish of Sichuan cuisine it's practically iconic mapo mm-hmm. tofu mapo tofu as a matter of fact the judge even said hey not only did they innovate this dish, they, they remembered the origin because they use the use of Sichuan peppers. It's not just about spice. It's about something called numbness. Numbness. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a concept in Chinese cuisine called Ma La Wei, where you have the combination of the heat spiciness and the numbing spiciness. The heat brings you up, it burns you. Mm. But then right afterwards, they got that numbing sensation to bring you back down. Mm. And within that dimension you got this flavor that is carried by the mala way hmm. and so therefore if you can go find yourself a good Sichuan place <laughs> get yourself a good mapo I, tofu i live by one actually I really think i might i might do this I might, you I might you go. you gotta try that <laughs> i mean it, it's just 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 have yourself a nice healthy ver- serving of mapo tofu mapo tofu okay. oh my god it is, <laughs> it is such a rush when it's done well you get the spice you know that, that burning sensation mm. but Chinese cuisine is one of the most complex cuisine styles in the world hmm. and ma, the, the ma la wei concept is just an example of it okay. so you get that combination of that burn your head off spice <laughs> with that numbing effect which is unique to Sichuan cuisine wow. so you said you cook yeah as now, a hobby yeah did this movie inspire you or were you a cook beforehand beforehand nice, <laughs> nice. you well, know what are some of your signature dishes uh some of mine let's see um well let's see okay all right <laughs> you have an egg roll in there <laughs> yeah 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 um no not an egg roll <laughs> uh, uh, let's see i dabble okay um let's see uh i've done uh, uh I, I could just name drop the styles that i play <laughs> with everything from american mm-hmm. to a little Thai, those are my roots. Some, cool. some Chinese, some Japanese, some Turkish, some Greek and Mediterranean. Jeez. You know, uh, huh. uh, some some Spanish. As a matter of fact, I keep Spanish saffron in my cupboard. Okay. All right. And uh, other I spices. had no idea, Rob. This is great. Hey, see, we learn as we go along. <laughs> we do, okay? we do. Right? And I <laughs> even, I haven't used it yet, but I even bought myself a, uh, uh, a device for that process spherification because you mm. saw in that 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 mapo tofu dish yeah it, it was like, covers oh, it look. with this like dome thing well no no that was the that, that was the uh, the the steak the a5 wagyu beef steak that mm. we made first of all a5 wagyu beef if you can i have never tried it myself <laughs> all right but if you can find it it's ridiculously expensive it, it, anywhere in the states they have to import it first of all okay and it, the A5 Wagyu beef, I, I forget the details of the ranking system. But is, it it's like, like, is it like the, the most expensive beef you can get? Yeah, yeah. Coming out of Japan, it's like the highest possible grade between the marbling and, and, and just the grade of the beef. And all. It's mm. like, I, I, I hear that it tastes exquisite and the texture is like butter kind of. Mm. It's love just it. unru- it. but it's a, but it's like at least a hundred dollars a pound kind of. Oh. It's just r- mad expensive. Kind of a side note: Have yeah. you ever tried beef megamaki, Japanese uh, dish? No, I haven't. It's it's scallions wrapped up in very tender beef. Kind oh, of, kind of like a beef sushi roll type of thing. Okay, delicious. <laughs> it's an appetizer. I think it'd also be uh, an, an entree as well. We 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 gotta eat some point. Yeah, uh, man. we've got to do we some got, restaurant after the time show, here. We'll chow down. Oh, okay, <laughs> and maybe we'll do a pilot for a, a variation of Under the Radar, but relates to food as opposed to movies. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just dropped an idea. <laughs> Inception works. All right, but Un- the, under the pantry. Yeah, know. yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> under the kitchen. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, here, here's, here's the thing. I, 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 my tangents are like going off the rails now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Okay, but uh, where, where, where were we? Okay, we were talking about. Oh yeah, the A5 Vacu. Yes. The beef, yeah, because that, because uh, the the two chefs they, they had this little contest in in the kitchen, mm. and the street chef Sky Co he just did this really good stir fry dish with the with the leeks mm. and and the and the A five wagyu beef. Mm-hmm. The texture was spot on. What's great about the traditional cooking style, you know, the stir fry and so forth, you get the heat and the the, the food keeps its temperature, mm-hmm. which is great. 
But the other guy, he used sous vide, which is a water bath type of method. He cooks the he he, he puts the meat in an airtight Ziploc bag, or, mm-hmm. or, or you know, plastic airtight plastic bag, and he dips it in a water bath right. that's set to boil at a, te- a very specific temperature, which I think in the case of beef is like 126 degrees. Okay. So it is like very precisely medium rare mm. and it is like instead of having just a small section of medium rare and the rest is well done kind of mm. like a gradation the entire cross section is is completely medium rare <laughs> and he used a blowtorch at the end of it outside because that just gave it a crust for the you know right. like a, a seared crust just for the appearance because wow. you don't just want to serve like just all pink meat you want to serve yeah that. and then the dome was for the sake of smoking it with apple wood chips just to give it that extra flavor accent mm-hmm. but uh <laughs> but the mapo tofu dish at the end, where you had all, all these little green balls on the ball, you know, yeah. that is spherification. Right. Sphere is the name for it. That is because we're getting into lots of food trivia here. I love okay. it. <laughs> spherification involves taking like a, a flavor extract in like liquid form. In this case, what they did was they they juiced uh, scallions and um, and another you know green matter like uh, yeah ginger as well. I think. And what about matcha? It, matcha? That's uh, like a green tea. Yeah. No, no, no. This is different. Mm. It, it takes savory items like you know scallions mm. and so forth. They, oh, wow. and they extract the juice from it, and then they use a combination of sodium alginate and calcium chloride. At, at, you know the, 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 the combination of the two, right. so that when you make drops of it and it hits the the, the, the water, and the, the, you know the bath, as soon as the water droplets hit the solution, it becomes a sphere. Okay, and you can actually find these at different frozen yogurt type places or mm. you know a soft serve ice cream where they serve like little spheres of oh the like bubble strawberry. tea the, uh, the no bubble. that's different that's actually natural tapioca oh okay but th- here this is like a topping of like a it's like a sort of you can almost call it like a strawberry or cherry ca- uh, caviar ooh that sounds like the, the bubble though yeah it sounds like it but mm. it's like but but the sodium alginate and calcium chloride solution creates like this spherical soft shell around it so that when you eat it you get this burst of juice from so it, it pops it pops in your mouth and that's oh. what that judge was describing how like the, mm. the scallion and uh, ginger flavors popped in his mouth one of the most memorable scenes was in, during the competition the like the lava cake thing oh that oh my god <laughs> how that, insane was that, that was epic plating if there ever was one it was like a plate full of like candied uh, orange and red fiery yeah right I, I can't that even was describe ep- it's like that is food that is <laughs> art I yeah, mean, yeah. right? They right. They, they take little pieces off. Oh. <laughs> I know, right? And then there was like this other. It was like a sushi plate, but they looked like actual fish. The, the, uh. the, 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 it was so weird how raw fish was used to was sculpted in the shape of swimming fish. Yeah, that was just beautiful. Again, plating. food porn. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> food <laughs> porn, exactly. It was so good. You know, <clears throat> definitely. So, yeah. So that, yeah, we could go out obviously. We could. Yeah, and and we can get on on with the tangents as well. And I love the tangents. Okay. But, um, but um, yeah, cook, cook up a storm. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Okay. <laughs> and wow. with a little food trivia and food porn, you know, we we, we know we didn't actually have any food porn. I guess like right. much like discreet, everything is like psychological at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this is just me personally. Any yeah. movie where you where there's like some 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 really interesting information. I, mm. I, yeah. Good story, good characters is one thing. But then when you bring it up some interesting information, yeah, I think that. For me, that drives it home. I didn't think I'd be like educated during this movie. Yeah, (laughs) any kind of education in fine cuisine. Yeah, Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, right. (laughs) I mean, uh, as a point of reference, if you were to find a a a restaurant that uses molecular gastronomy techniques in their dishes, you be prepared to you know be be financially prepared. Oh, gotcha. They're they're not cheap. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Imagine. (laughs) Okay, because. they're all their whole website. If you want to get into it at home, you, there are like you know molecular gastronomy websites and resources that are out there. So that's if you know for your own. I just pictured they give you a, a bowl full of smoke and it'll be like forty dollars. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. And in Shokugeki no Soma, I, I, I that was from my first exposure to molecular gastronomy because mm-hmm. one of the characters, Alice Nakiri, is a molecular gastronomy expert, mm. and so she's using everything from spherification and uh, uh, mist techniques and other really. Uh, and thermal sense cooking into a curry dish. Mm-hmm. She had element in a, in a curry dish. She made she had uh, like elements that were 
flash frozen and cold and then elements that were hot mm -hmm. so you got a contrast of not just flavors but a contrast of temperatures wow. have you dabbled in ga gastro um, my, my molecular, molecular gastro yeah uh, it's an extremely minor amateurish degree. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I said, I bought a spherification machine. I never got around to actually using it because the thing is, <laughs> uh, you, 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 you can have your gun, but then you have to get the ammunition from somewhere. Uh -huh. In this case, you need the, the the sodium alginate and calcium chloride, which I understand you can get from any. That um, sounds pharmacy. expensive. Just saying it. <laughs> you, know, you can actually get it from what I read. You can get it from like any pharmacy. Oh, okay. So you know it's readily available. So basically, you can make your own homemade caviar of like whatever flavor. Oh, wow. Uh, as long as it's in a liquid form, but I understand from what from I read, uh, when it's something oil like olive oil or something, that's even more involved. And as a matter of fact, I found this one website where this one guy sells spherified extra virgin olive oil. So it's olive oil, but in little caviar form. Jeez. I'm like, yeah, that is just super elegant. Does it? You just put that on top of the bread and it just melts. No, no, just put it on top of the bread and it just like sits on top of like a caviar kind of. That's so weird. <laughs> but then when you bite into it, it's like the, 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 the flavors just pop in your mouth. Awesome. Oh, yeah. that just does, yeah. So, yes, yeah, spherification. So now you know. Nice. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. So, um, it is the summer. You were feeling the heat a little bit. Uh huh. Um, what are some of the movies you're looking forward to? Okay, where do I begin? Now, I, we, we, this, this summer, we pretty much gone through like. So far, we've got. <laughs> Infinity War, all right. Got we already got like Deadpool two, check. Yeah, uh, I, I really liked Deadpool two. I love what Deadpool can do in a movie. By the way, so. I liked it a lot, but I didn't think it held a candle to the original. Well, it they went in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. Because you know you cannot repeat, you cannot copy paste the formula of the first one. Right. They expected to do well. They had the balls to take it in the direction that they did. Mm -hmm. And some of them literally, some, yeah, 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 and, and, and even literally. Okay, all right. I try to stay clean, but every night, but this is Deadpool, it's hard to be clean around a guy like him. That's true. All right. <laughs> oh, even when he's mentioned, I'm sorry. Okay, but um, and there are just things where he'll just do something and take it so seriously, but then yank the rug from underneath it, mm. and it's like, why did he even go through that journey in the first place? But huh. this is Deadpool we're talking about. He can get away with that stuff. He, yeah. But as far as upcoming movies. My next one under under my radar is uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. When does uh, that come? That's coming out uh, July, August. July, I think. Yeah, I hope. The first one was so good. <laughs> I I love this one. Of my favorite Marvel movies. For yeah, sure. especially the Marvel Cinematic Mo uh, Universe movies that have such a good track record. Yeah, I I love the, the there is an overall consistency to them. Even the bad movies aren't really that bad. Like they're, no, they're, no, not at all. No, you know, I can't I, think of like a like a really crappy Marvel movie in recent years. Well, within especially the cinematic universe. I, right. I well, I was gonna. Say, I didn't see Fanta the new Fantastic Four. That's not within the cinematic universe. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's 20th Century Fox. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's independent of that cinematic universe. Gotcha. But if the if the rumors I read are true, and Marvel slash Disney buys back their rights from 20th Century Fox, that means we could hopefully see Disney and Marvel make X Men movies and Fantastic Four mm. movies. And okay. therefore, integrate them into the larger Marvel Cinematic there Universe. Go. That would be epic. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, that's what I loved about Spider-Man Homecoming. It's not just that you know Tom Holland did a fantastic job mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, not that I need to shout out to the dude, right. but Tom Holland <laughs> I thought did a fantastic job. I loved what he did with Peter Parker and Spider Man. And they combined Iron Man in such a seamless, beautiful way. Like, really and that's works. another thing: the incorporation of yeah. Spider Man into the Marvel universe mm -hmm. with. Tony Stark as his mentor and and um, I love it. Yeah, you know, mentor and uh, benefactor. Yeah, is there gonna be another? Or just, no, it's gonna be another. Yeah, yeah, Spider there's gonna be. I, it, I, I heard that in the pipeline, Homecoming two or Spider-Man Homecoming two is in the pipeline. Oh, they're gonna keep calling it Homecoming. Yeah, well, I don't know if they're gonna call it Homecoming. I guess the title title is like t TBA at the moment. Okay. So nice. Um, uh, but a, another Spider-Man movie is in the pipeline, which but which in itself is kind of a spoiler alert for what happened at the end of Infinity War. Mm, true, you know? that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that's to say true. it. True, very good. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, just like little clues like that kind of give away plot, plot points. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we gotta be very careful. I know, right? <laughs> IMDb can spoil you alone just that's from true. seeing what's in the pipeline. That's true. You know? Just check the cast credits. <laughs> cast credit? No, cast credits not so much. But like upcoming releases. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. alone is a spoiler. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, for me, I'm I'm a big Jurassic Park fan. Huge. Ah. Um, I I didn't love Jurassic World. Um, I but I am looking forward to the new movie because mm -hmm. well, Jeff Goldblum. That's really it. <laughs> and Chris Pratt, I like his presence. I like his work. He's good. He's like a young, sort of a young rough 
Harrison Ford. I could see him as, as right, like right. Indiana Jones almost. I really like him as Star Lord oh, from Guardians right. of the Galaxy and Infinity War. Yes, he has such a charismatic presence to him. He's just so likable. I know he's very very funny, and he's got a, he's a, he's buff too. So he's, he's buff too. But even then, the I action. love the cracks on his character. He is he plays a character so well, such that he gets made fun of, and he just kind of pouts to it. Kind of, he's like. Dude, that is so uncool. Yeah, just the way he reacts. He's he, great. He, he just he does such a solid job, and and he, and in Infinity War, it's like yeah, even though he's buff, he's like he's being compared to Thor. It's like my God, this, guy, <laughs> this guy, his muscles must be made of chitauri fibers, and he's like, stop looking at his muscles, stop feeling his muscles. It's like, uh, let's be honest, Cole, you're yeah. one, you're one sandwich away from being okay. I get it, you know. You know. So I take it you like Jurassic World. <laughs> Actually, I didn't see it. Unfortunately, oh. um, I would, I probably would, but I don't know. It's just I wasn't really compelled. Yeah. It's it feels more in line with like Jurassic Park three, that kind yeah. of lighthearted, goofy yeah. action, yeah. over the top. Let's throw in every dinosaur possible. Yeah, like have a dude that that rides with raptors, kind of thing. Yeah, it was well, okay. I, I just didn't love it. Yeah, well, uh, I can see the appeal in Chris Pat Pratt being in you know the, the, the yeah he Jurassic was World. he was cast adequately I think yeah so he, he, he would be a, a, a point of interest for mm-hmm. me uh, what he would bring to that yeah world, you know? I mean I'm a big I mean I'm really nostalgic so I think they should bring back Sam Neill mm-hmm. Laura Dern and Goldblum mm-hmm. and just have them like go crazy in the new Jurassic World yeah that but you know what I that, that's iffy you know mm-hmm. that, that's I mean they, they were Weren't those two brought back for like the third Jurassic? They Park? were actually. Yeah. yeah, it was like an awkward encounter because they were broken up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were just like talking in a in a in a backyard. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I don't remember why, but. Right. Yeah, they were reunited for I that mean, one scene. Jurassic Park was iconic. Yes. Yes. All right. It's like a legendary movie. It's and so great. And the book is so worth reading. I have yet to read that book. Oh my god! Yeah. What the late Michael Price's work? It's violent, right? It's. It's not just that it's violent. It's highly educational because mm, anything he does, anything Michael Crichton never wrote, he goes into so much scientific detail that it's like a, a, a seminar. <laughs> I mean, I mean, er, 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 all of his theories like chaos theory, uh, I, they, they might have gone into string theory and so mm. forth, like all these mathematical and scientific principles and so forth. So it's like science porn, if you will. <laughs> so there we go. So you know, the movie was great. It's legendary. It's iconic. Don't get me wrong. But do anybody who's ever enjoyed the, the classic Jurassic Park and has yet to read the book, please read the book, the yeah. source material. Oh my God! Just, just not not just from the characters, because he, he was Michael Crichton was really gifted at, at telling a story and also educating the reader. Mm, okay. So that he's like one of the early examples of like educational entertainment. Oh, cool! All well. right, yeah, good so. to know. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, food for the brain. As it yes, were. indeed. All right. This is a very educational show today. Yes. <laughs> all right. God, we got into everything from culinary concepts to mathematical concepts. Indeed, so I'm like, indeed. What, all in one episode. And with that, uh-huh. I think it's time for a little magic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A little. <laughs> let's get mental here. Yeah. All right. Let's get. I love it. <laughs> all right. Now here's the thing. We just reviewed Discreet as our first movie. Let's bring things full circle. Yes. Yes. There were parts of that movie I wish I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see like, just parts uh, uh, parts, of, part, parts I wish I could unsee so right, having right. said that let me just bring out a few items here uh, this is one such item made of leather uh, Randy could you mind taking off your glasses yes, sure. and putting this over your head nesting this uh, uh, over top of you okay alright cool. All right. matches my jacket okay matches oh yeah that's right it matches your jacket <laughs> coincidentally enough alright All right. and yeah you what are you able to see uh, nothing. Darkness. Uh, precisely. <laughs> precisely. Okay. You know what? It, it, for the sake of fairness, uh, take it off and put it right here on the table. Okay. All right. We want to make sure that everything stays in frame. So, and can we agree on these? We got these bandages here. Yes. Okay. Now. I'm scared now. Okay. <laughs> run out now, bandages. Can we agree on this? This sucker is empty. Empty. Your cup here. Yes. Under, un, under the radar. Yes, all right. It is. Now I'm gonna s- help set the stage here. All right. Uh huh. So, uh, in setting the stage. Uh, I, we got this camera right here, from, right, right. Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm gonna set the stage here. So what I'm gonna do is the following. Okay, can, can we can we see here just like a handful of change? You can see all this, right? I'm gonna, I'm just going to just dump it in here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get some more change, right, in, 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 into my pocket. Okay. Okay. As a matter of fact, here. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. Okay. Can we agree on just like more random change? Random yeah. change. Okay. More random change. Okay. You see that? All right. 
Okay, so more random yep. change. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to get some more random change, all right? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, do me a favor in your left hand. Mix it up, mix it up. Hold it up a little high because what, what I want you to do with your right hand is to reach inside, take one of those pieces of random change, but keep it in a closed fist such that you don't even know what it is. All right. Okay. 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 I'll take the rest. All right. Okay. I'm going to empty it out. Can we agree? Bone dry? Bone yeah. dry. Empty. Okay. Okay. Put that. Uh, uh, notice I'm having it done up here because I don't want you to see what's in there. Just drop, drop it in. It. Okay, and put your phone on top of that, or you can put that mic stand on top of that. Okay. Okay, so the idea is that we keep that piece of mystery change, a complete mystery, up until the very end. All right. All right, so that sets the stage. Now, now here I have what, what you saw before, you know, the bandages, all right? So, like I said, this goes back to that movie Discreet. I mean, there were parts, I, I, really, <laughs> wish, I really wish I was blind at certain moments. So I'm going to, this is a delayed wish fulfillment, all right? So, we can agree on this, right? Bandage, yes. right? Right. So, first. Okay. Oh boy. For me, this really will be radio because I won't be able to see anything. Yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I know. Right. This is <laughs> this is nuts, right? So A little we got bit. this. We got this. We got this. We got this. And you see, we got that there. All right. We can agree on this, right? Yes. And could you hand me that leather blindfold if you don't mind? Yes. All right. Okay. Good. Okay, uh, yeah, that's that. Okay, so. So we can agree, I got two layers on me, okay? Mm -hmm. You have the one layer of leather and even then you can see through it. Yeah. I got two, <laughs> all right? So things are a lot worse for me. But I just wanted to emphasize the challenge aspect and I, I don't want you to think that I'm shortchanging myself by using just the letter. I'm using leather with bandages, all right? So let's uh, warm up here. Uh, Randy, I understand you brought some movies with you. You're, I did. You're like I a did. movie buff as well. Just so. a bit. Yeah. All right. Bring one of your movies out and show the face of it to the camera, all right? All right. And doesn't make sure... Doesn't matter. Blu-ray, DVD. Doesn't matter. Doesn't okay. matter. Just, just so it's like sort of between my hands kind of, okay? All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. It is between your hands right okay. now. It's between my hands right now. And the camera can see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I'm getting the cover has a lot of white on this thing. Yeah. A lot of light, I guess. White. A, a lot, lot of white. White, yes, definitely. And there's and there's a splash of color, like in the middle, sort of. There is. All right. A uh, bunch of characters. Yes. Uh, people standing around, white background, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, um. All right, I'm getting a, a, a blue plastic. I'm getting. Yes, you are correct. No, that that tells me Blu-ray. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. This is an older movie, and you. It is. Wow, you actually like to update your movie collection such that you'll take an older movie and get the Blu-ray version. I do, I do. Oh, you're really hardcore it. movie buff. I do. We're profiling Randy Unger. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, uh, okay, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. Um, it's a bunch of kids on this thing. Yeah. There's a colorful title to this. Mm. Like the, the the title is written in like a lot a lot of a lot of colors. It is. <laughs> And, but but that's only like the beginning. Like the the, the 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 rest of the title is like a single color, but like a much larger font kind it of. It is. Yes. A uh, bunch of kids, but one adult. Mm -hmm. Big adult. Yes. <laughs> that would be Arnold Schwarzenegger. That would be Kindergarten Cop. It right? would be. Yeah, hey kindergarten now. Cop. There we have it. Wow. All right. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. Let's see if we can keep this going. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see. I'll just put another movie here. Okay. Another one. All right. Another one. All right. Okay. All okay, right, okay, right. take your time, take your time, all right, all right. You got a lot, oh, clear, I can hear a lot there. Yeah, I'm you, putting some thought into this. Okay, oh, oh, he, he wants to challenge me at this point, okay? <laughs> all right, okay, so, you know, okay, we'll, we'll bring it over, okay, okay. All right, it is. All right, all right. Wow, why do I get the feeling that this is an example of where your taste in movies with, coincides with mine? <laughs> all right. It's a, yeah. This is a beloved classic. Oh, yes. This is a really kind of updated version of of it. This wouldn't be a special edition, would it? Uh, it would be, yeah. Oh wow, wow, wow. <laughs> why? I get the wow, wow, wow. I'm getting the feeling that this is like this relates to that movie that we reviewed last time, Solo. Perhaps, yes. I think yeah, because the characters from Solo show up in this one. This is Empire Strikes Back. Wow. Han Solo, Lando Calrissian, <laughs> Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Darth Vader, uh, Adat Walker's Yoda. Empire Strikes Back. Holy. DVD version. Wow. Dude. <laughs> that is, wow. Okay. That's what, great. All right, what else you got? All right, we got one more, and then we got to do um, a quick interview I did. Okay.
Okay. Well, you know what? If, yeah, one more, one more. Let's one, make this real. Well, one we'll make more this. quick one. Okay. And then we'll get to the climax. All right. Alrighty. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here right. we go. Here we go. Okay. Wait. Um. All right. Oh. oh okay. This is a John Travolta movie. What? <laughs> Dude. Okay. At, you know, at first I thought this was Face Off with Nicolas Cage, <laughs> but no, no. That's 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 Christian Slater, isn't it? That's it is. Broken Arrow. It is. Okay. <laughs> Broken Arrow. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now. All right. Do me a favor. Okay. You got that cup with the change in there, right? Yeah. One piece of change. All uh -huh. right. Uh, you know what? Just I have a feeling that you might need this in, in a little bit. This is a magnifying glass, okay? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, okay. I just snapped the battery. That's just bad. All right. Uh, never mind. But you get the idea. Okay. That, that was, I'm, I'm blind. What do you want? <laughs> okay. But this is a magnifying glass. We need okay. Okay. I, I, okay. There's the battery. I feel it. Do you need that? Okay. I'll put no, that. that's just for the flashlight part of it. Okay. All right. So you don't need the battery. Okay. No. You, well, you, you don't. We, we're, we're in a well-lit place. <laughs> okay, so do me a favor. Uh, bring, take the without looking at the uh, the inside of the cup. Right. And as soon as you take that that mic stand, put your other hand on top of the mouth of the cup. All right. Okay, and and, and your other hand, your uh, beneath it, bring it right here. Mm-hmm. To you. Your hand between my hands. Okay. Yeah. Everybody see this? I'm, okay. I'm between you. Okay. Uh, I heard a little bit of a rattle there. Okay, good. All right, I'm getting. I'm getting that it, this is a, 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 well, small coin, obviously, but small denomination. I, based on the tin here, I think this is a, all right, this is a very, very, very almost worthless amount of change. This is, this is a penny. This is a penny. Uh-huh. I can't see. From 1971. Ooh. Specific. Re reach, reach, reach in. Yeah, reach pull, in. Pull everything out. That's just one coin. Yeah, yeah. It, first of all, it's a penny, yes? It is a penny. Okay, just just use that magnifying glass to verify or your glasses. I can see it. What year did you say? 1971. And you were correct, sir. <laughs> yes, we got it! That was awesome. <laughs> all right, now well, I gotta take all this off. Okay, and then nice. and then just ow, 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 ow. Careful, ow, careful. Ow, ow, like ow. a Band-Aid, right off. Yeah, right, yeah, that, just take that right off. Okay. All right. Woo! Robin, awesome. Okay, everybody's blurry now. For me, that was radio. <laughs> all right. Did you want to plug anything? Uh, uh let's see. Uh, I'll be appearing randomly at LOL Comedy Club as usual, and also I'm available for any private parties and social gatherings. I'm, I have trick will travel, <laughs> so you know, robinchanning.com, and I'm also on social media, so look me up. Look him up, he's awesome. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, yeah, Robin, thank you. That was amazing. Likewise, awesomely, that was fun. Awesomely done. Thank you, thank yeah. you. That was fun. <laughs> We just winged it, and here we are. We did, we did. Okay. We'll have you on again soon. Okay, I hope. Awesome, yes. All right, very good. So right now, uh, we're going to broadcast an interview I did the other day with a filmmaker named York Shackleton, and he wrote and directed the new Nicolas Cage action thriller, 211. Check it out, guys. Mm -hmm. Hi, York. How are you today? It's hey, good. Ready? Yeah, it's good. I'm doing well, Randy. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for taking the time. So I saw the film uh, yesterday, it's really interesting, <laughs> great action. Uh, tell me, how did the project originally yeah, happen? Like on the, on the, yeah. After the clip, I'll yeah, just so this is something by. that um, you have, you okay. know, I can specialize with. Yeah, dude, I, I feel that like really, I'm already over, so. Yeah, we did a lot of like dramatic quick, films, yeah. um, did a lot of lower budget stuff, and we wanted to continue to obviously, you know, right with our careers. Um, so we had sat down and, and kind of mathematically laid out more of a guideline of what we needed to do. And we were looking for an action film, um, you know, confined one location. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the beginning idea of what we were going to we were going to do started. And so from that, I started doing a lot of research on um, different situations. And I remember the North Hollywood shootout. And so we went back to that and started looking. And it was interesting. I had realized that there was an enormous following behind that situation that a lot of people almost like a cult were talking about it and speculating on what they thought had happened and who they thought these people maybe were and a lot of just you know grandiose ideas and I thought what a great opportunity now to have that premise that root we need of the initial structuring because that situation on its own really almost had this three-act structure to how it took place the actual shootout of it all. So I felt like there was a great starting point in the route that we needed right there, and the fact that there was so much speculation on what really happened gave me a lot of opportunities as a writer to speculate, I mean, I'm sorry, to kind of take liberties and um, find those sub-stories and those different characters and arcs that we need to make it a very well-rounded film. And obviously, 
the have the largest demographic as possible. Great! Wow. Um, what was it like working with Nicolas Cage? You know, Nicholas, that's a, that's a life changing experience. You know, I mean, it, it's it's very honor honorable and humbling to have an actor like that. You know, be drawn to the material and want to do it. Um, right away, we met and we discussed, you know, what we thought the character needed to be and how we wanted to come at it. We both had the same vision in a sense of making it a very internalized performance, a, a guy that's struggling in his life. We talked a lot about struggles I've had and struggles he's had and people we know, and, and we started deriving a lot from that. And I think you'll see in the film, that's where you get that performance that you don't often see from him. He's such a strong actor, he can do anything. And I think that's why a lot of times people love to go with him to these bigger places and see where they can really go outside the box. But we wanted to do something inside the box. And so we worked very well together on that. And then it made for a really great onset experience because we stayed true to that vision and what we discussed ahead of time while we were on set. So every day it was completely on the same page, knowing what we want to accomplish and allowing to feel very safe in each other's hands to experiment within the, the parameters that we had both set. Do you see yourself working with Nicholas in the, in the, in the future? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, you know, we, we, um, I like to think we're friends, you know, we talk once in a while and I stay in contact with him. And I told him, you know, I, I, I think it's so amazing once you've worked with someone like that and you've had a good experience, I look at other filmmakers and their connections with different actors, and I just think that being able to work a second time with somebody and, and then maybe even a third and a fourth, it just gives you so many opportunities to take things to even a, another level because you've worked already and you've worked through a lot of the things that come. You know, when you're making a film, you've got a, such a limited amount of time to actually shoot it, but, but, and everything's yeah. happening so quickly that you're thrust into this together, you barely know each other, but by the end of it, you feel like you've gone through war together and you're very close, and then it ends. But to be <laughs> able to now build off of that, you can right. be so much stronger. And you see that with guys like um, Scorsese and Leo working together a lot. And sure, continuing sure. to, you know, really do, do great things together. So, yeah, I would be very honored and definitely want to. And it's something that I'm actually trying to, to put together right now, something for us to work on together again. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what was it like working with the rest of the wonderful cast? It's great because for me as a filmmaker, I think we're obviously only as strong as our smallest role or our, our weakest at performance. Mm -hmm. um, so I put an enormous amount of time and energy into every single person that's in that film and e e equal love to everybody. Mm -hmm. So you really want to build out a strong ensemble so that when, when you've got an audience full of people watching this, a full theater, there's someone in that film that anyone that's in that audience can relate to, because not everyone's the same. And so I wanted it to feel like it was a very ensemble film with a, with a big cast of people, that they, but yet there was a strong juxtaposition of character between each one. So there's really no overlapping of, of um, motives and, and what their, their ideas are within each scene. It's more of they're there so that someone's got someone to relate to and say, that's what it would be like if I was in this situation. I would be interacting like that character is right there. Okay. So were any other uh, actors considered for the main role, for Nick's uh, role? No, we were lucky. We When the studio um, greenlit the film and they wanted to go, we started the casting process, and he was actually the first uh, person that we went to. Studio right. had worked with him um, on, on many films in the past, and so he was aware of them. Um, but he, he hadn't worked with me and didn't really know me, so he liked the material, and he said, yeah, I'll meet with this director. Hmm. And when we met, um, you know, we had, a, we had a really nice meeting, and we both were on the same page as far as, as, far as what we were looking to do, and, and so we made that commitment to each other and, and stuck to it. Great, great. So we're and lucky really, in that sense, and it doesn't it doesn't happen like that every time, you know, where yeah. kind of all tees up like that. I've been on movies where you're going, you're you're still looking for actors, you know, a week out. <laughs> so it's right. uh, it's very lucky, and, and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's nice to see um, the, the, that you can make films in a way where you know it's a little bit more put together and controlled, opposed to the more independent films that are really fly by the seat of your pants. And speaking to that, um, curious, what were some of the challenges you faced on set? 
I mean, the biggest challenge I would say would just be because we shot the film um, overseas on a studio lot. Um, and, you know, when you're trying to do something documentary style and capture as much realism as possible within the film, um, you want to be doing everything, as much of everything as practical as you can. So I would say that probably would have just been the biggest obstacle. Um, you know, for me, I don't look at anything as an obstacle because it's, it's when you're going to make a movie, there's always going to be so many things that get thrown at you during the process. And you have to really look at these as situations to make educated compromises or otherwise you're going to find yourself getting caught up in, in not having certain things that you need to accomplish certain things that you want to accomplish. So if you stay true to what your vision is, and in advance say, well, if we can't do that or we can't get that location and that's not going to work, I can creatively come up with something that's going to accomplish exactly what I was trying to accomplish with that structuring as long as you really do know the fundamentals of what you're doing as a filmmaker and why you're making the choices you're making on lenses and frame sizes because there's a fundamental to all of that that makes you feel a certain emotion depending on what you're seeing or hearing. Hmm. All right. Well, yeah, I'm curious, um, are there any filmmakers out there who have inspired your craft? I mean, I, I, I love the filmmaking process, and I watch every single film that I possibly can for many different reasons, and it really depends where I'm at in my head. If I'm developing something, writing something, um, I'll watch films to just see why they didn't work if someone says they didn't work for some reason. And I'll want to really dive into it and analyze it. And I'll analyze it down to the time it was released, where people's heads were at, what else was going on in society. Um, so, you know, my generation, when I grew up being someone, you know, wanting to make films and obviously looking at who's the best and the greatest, you've got Stanley Kubrick's of the world, you know, that you'd look at and I think mm. are very inspiring to just be the greatest at your craft itself. I think that's what I would take like from someone like him is just that, you know, be so damn good at every aspect of making movies that there's nobody on that set that can do any one of those jobs better than you. And I think that's just a really great seat to sit in. Um, but then you got your contemporary filmmakers like Peter Berg, who I think are doing great things with true life uh, subjects and finding great balance with the drama and the action. Um, Taylor Sheridan, I think now is, doing a lot of it as well, He's, you know, started directing. Um, and so, yeah, I think that I, I like to see where the progression of everything goes and continue to be on the forefront of that. So I'm always looking at who's the leaders and, and the, the front runners in that mm -hmm. sense. And then just going back to the whole film body itself as a great opportunity of just research to see of how everyone else did it and how it worked out for them and see what worked and what didn't work. Okay. Well, York, thank you so much for your yes. time today. And uh, if you're ever in uh, Long yeah, Island, New York, uh, feel free to stop by the studio anytime. I'd love to have you. Okay, yeah, definitely, man. When next time I'm out there, I'll come by and see you guys. When we finish Sounds up, great. we'll do a follow-up. All right, I, lo I love it. All right, York, thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay, take care. All right, bye. Bye-bye. And that's our show, guys. I want to thank everyone who was here today. Uh, Mr. Robin Channing, he was awesome as always and mr jim savali thank you terrific show as always and this was actually number 40 and i just want to thank everyone who's been watching all this time uh making it a really fun adventure every week um and yeah unfortunately i will not be here next sunday but i will be returning on june 17th with some more movie reviews and interviews for you so stay tuned for that and uh, i'll see you guys next time take care <laughs>